Hello everyone, this is Richard with the Modern Healthspan newsletter. First, a disclaimer. In this newsletter series, we will share the latest research studies and news and events in Healthspan field that we have found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. First, we would like to give a shout out to our supporters who are very generous to buy us some coffees. It encourages us to continue to share information on ageing research. Thank you so much for your support. On February the 12th, Dr. Lusgarden tweeted some encouraging news about Europe's oldest living person surviving COVID, just before her 117th birthday. Sister Andre was born on the 11th of February 1904. As well as being Europe's oldest person, she is also the second oldest living person in the world, and on top of that, now that she's the world's oldest survivor of COVID-19. She tested positive for the coronavirus on 16th of January. She had so few symptoms that she didn't even realise that she was infected. Her survival made headlines in both France and beyond. Later we found another article showing that she had totally recovered and is able to celebrate her 117th birthday with a feast including champagne, red wine and port. According to the article, one of her longevity secrets is drinking red wine. The first paper we have today is looking at how alpha-ketoglutrate and NMN help reduce obesity. Obesity is a serious problem in public health worldwide. And how the pre-adipocytes, basically the fat stem cells, differentiate is important to the health of the fat tissue. If this process is disrupted, there is a growth of fat cells and fats are deposited in the wrong locations, leading to inflammation in the fat tissue and systemic metabolic disorder. It is not clear how the metabolic state affects these state changes. NAD plays a crucial role in mediating whether and how the differentiation happens. However, the role of NAD plus and NAMPT in adipocyte differentiation is unclear. In this study, the authors looked at the metabolic reprogramming that occurred to cause fat cells to differentiate. The 323L1 mentioned in the paper is a line of mouse fat cells often used in laboratories. They found that the trigarboxylic acid cycle was enhanced, which correlated with upregulated NAD synthesis and also alpha-ketoglutarate by demethylating histone H3K9 in the promoter region of PPAR gamma activated this enzyme. The conclusion is that NAD plus centered metabolic reprogramming is necessary for the differentiation of fat cell preadipocytes. A combination of NMN and alpha-ketoglutarate by providing the necessary cofactors help with this process and help reduce the overall accumulation of fat and inflammation that can occur. Our second paper looks at how background radiation impacts human longevity and cancer mortality. The current view is that all radiation carries some risk and the lower the better. In this paper the authors looked at how radiation impacts human longevity and cancer mortality. They used data from the entire US population of 320 million people and compared this to major sources of radiation. They show that life expectancy was approximately 2.5 years longer in areas of high background radiation versus low radiation. They postulate that this lifespan extension is because of a decrease in cancer mortality rates. Here is the map of the US showing the areas with different background radiation, with green being low, yellow medium and red high. Here is the plot for life expectancy against radiation for men and women. We can see that the life expectancy increases with radiation. And here are similar plots for cancer mortality against radiation. We can see that as radiation increases, the cancer mortality actually decreases. They reference other studies which have shown a similar outcome and experimental animal studies which have shown a lifespan extending effect of radiation known as longevity hormesis. They postulate that the benefits from low dose radiation could be the result of several potential mechanisms such as the activation of DNA repair or endogenous antioxidant systems, induction of heat shock proteins or stimulation of the immune system. And in a final conclusion, the authors say that low-level radiation is not harmful and is in fact apparently beneficial for human health. My understanding was always that all radiation was bad, as it could cause DNA damage. However, it seems that at low levels it's actually beneficial. Perhaps in a similar way to resveratrol, which activates sirtuins, the damage to the DNA by the radiation acts to upregulate the DNA repair mechanism. And our final paper 
for today is about a method of measuring chronic cortisol concentration using earwax. In the test they had 37 participants for whom they extracted an earwax sample using the traditional method. One month later they had the participants back and used the traditional method on the left ear and the new method on the right. Participants also provided a hair sample and a blood sample to other ways of measuring cortisol levels. The authors then compared the three methods. Here is the new device that they are using. Notice that it has a brake to prevent the sponge being pushed too deep into the ear. When comparing methods of measuring cortisol, serum analysis requires fewer hours but gives a single snapshot and for chronic cortisol levels multiple samples need to be taken. Hair provides levels over time but the processing is more complex and time consuming. With the device less time can be spent in the collection and the processing. With the conclusion that the, the use of the device can result in faster and maybe more economical cortisol analysis. Although the trial was on cortisol levels, the researchers also looked at glucose levels as a way of checking for diabetes. All in all, an interesting idea. It would certainly be nice to get a cheap and easy way to get my long-term blood glucose without an HbA1c test. Now our event corner. First, 5th Annual Centre for Definitive and Curative Medicine Symposium Virtual Event will be held on Thursday, February the 25th. The event will be presented by researchers who are poised to use cell and gene therapies to treat diseases. Dr. Sebastiano will be one of the speakers. His topic is Epigenetic Reprogramming of Aging, Curative Implications for the Elderly. Our second event is the second annual symposium of the Midwest Aging Consortium on February the 18th. It is a half-day event presented by various speakers focusing on aging topics. For details of both events and registration, please find the links in the description. We shall finish our newsletter with another tweet by nature. A new fossil specimen of Ville Verlodon diplomylos, an ancient herbivore similar to a flying squirrel, may push the origin of mammals back millions of years earlier than previously thought. Back from the Jurassic to the late Triassic, about 200 million years ago. It's amazing. We won't talk about the detail here. Nature has an interesting explanation video in Twitter. If you are interested, please find the link in the description. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the newsletter informative. As we find more interesting research and longevity news, we will release our next newsletter. So please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button and select all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.